You're listening to the Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. That's right. And you just heard Trivium like Light the Flies, Pantera the Badge, which is actually a cover. I don't remember what band that's a cover from. But fuck it. And Slayer Final Six. <laughs> We're in the studio with Skull King. Ow! <laughs> Skull King! <laughs> <laughs> How about you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and what you do in the band? I am Nick Donardo, lead singer for Skull King! I'm Cliff, I play bass. <laughs> I am Paul, I play guitar. <laughs> I'm Brian, I play drums and hold the whole damn thing together. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? What, we've got somebody still sitting here. Who is this gentleman? Who? What's that? You. Paul. Oh, I introduced myself. Yes. Yeah. Oh, like, Mike's just really he's low. He's just really quiet. He's just, he's just, he's just here for his good looks. How's this? Okay, Better. I'm Paul. I play guitar. Awesome. He it's just you four, right? Stirring. It's just us four, yes. Very nice. Yeah. How long have you guys been a band? Jeez, we started in October 2010. So, uh, a little you guys have played here. a lot of shows between we now play, and then. We played quite a bit. Quite a bit. I don't, need, I don't How many shows? 50, maybe? Yeah. Something like that? Jeez, quite who's booking all these shows for you? Well, <laughs> Nick is doing it. <laughs> He's got his own business. He's got time. Yeah, singer, <laughs> also manager of Skull King. Very nice. Oh. He does a good job. So I like how you just so you. promoted yourself. Thank you, brothers. That's awesome. Is this my mic? <laughs> Thanks. It is now. <laughs> so yeah, we, we are a self we are a self managed band. Uh, I, you know, I do a lot of the management stuff for the band, but you know, I couldn't do my thing if these guys didn't do their things, and they help me, you know, with flyers and that kind of stuff, <laughs> and drinking beer, right? Maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Not me. That's what we call. So it. yeah, speaking about shows, we're going to be this Thursday night, right around the corner from here, Stage Bar, um, nine o'clock show time. So. Over 21 only, so hopefully everybody can come out and check it out. Who are you playing with? Well, we're the headliner. What's the band? <laughs> Does someone know? <laughs> I forgot. There's so we, many. Will, we will look it up. We can Google it. Please hold while it's connected. <laughs> Zero to end. Zero to end. We we are fortunate to play with so many bands around Chicago um, that it's really hard to keep track of them, really. Oh, Has honestly. there been a favorite person that you've played with or band? Jeez, that's a tough one. Cliff, what do you got? Oh uh, Put you on the spot. Come on, Cliff. Okay. Approaching Dawn. Yeah, we really love yeah, Approaching really Dawn. Band. What about White Boy Schwasted? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> we've, uh, we've been paired up with some rap groups. White Boy. Uh, Approaching Schwasted. Dawn was good, but but there's another band with the name Zero. I think it was called Seeking Zero. We played with at yeah, Penny Road good. Pub, and I like those guys a lot. They were they were younger guys, but they were really good. Yeah, right. ADD. AD, we never played with them. So I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and another band. Yeah. And we've been, uh, you know, we've played with some national acts like Dope um, at Mojo's and Joliet. Um, so was well, that the same show that Psychopathic Days? Yes, played? actually, and we've played with Psychopathic Days a couple times as well at Mojo's. Yeah, so we're buzz, we're buzz with them. Yeah, and there's another band in um, in Ottawa we played with that was a touring band. Chaos Ordinance. Well, no, oh, they're, no they're, um, well, they're from Streeter, but um, I can't remember the name of the band. It was it was a touring band though. They were really right. Good. I really want to check out White Boy Schwasted. <laughs> White Boy Schwasted. White a, Boy Schwasted. Is that hilarious. a rap? <laughs> yeah. Group they just they just ran off a computer like their little you know their little sounds their music oh, and stuff geez. and it was just like three white guys. How about a, with the lyrics with too? So you knew yeah. what they were saying. No. White no, boy not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, the drunker they got, the harder they, it was too. But were they like Beastie Boys? Yeah. No. Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, really. a lot like that. Yeah. That I could handle. But we, we've been paired fun. up with, you know, all different kinds of metal bands, hip-hop artists, DJs, whatever. We're just happy to have the opportunity to play our music, you know, anywhere we can. So Nice job, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. So with your sound as a band, though, who would you think you sound a lot more like? Jeez, I don't know. Um, Everybody we, says it's unique. I can't. Yeah. We, we all have such, you know, varied interests and I think it styles from, of music it starts from there our, our interests and whatnot so i mean there's there's everything from gosh kill switch engage queens reich tool um you know seven dust Beethoven. everything it, it goes song by yeah it goes song by song you might hear one song and you say oh that sounds like so and so you hear another song it's like oh it sounds like somebody else you know you know but really you know when we write music and when I write lyrics or whoever writes whatever in the band, we don't really say, "Hey, let's sound like this," or right. "Let's." Do, it just, we just write tunes, you know, and they right. they just come out the way they do. Um, so. And I and I hate to label it like, "What do you guys sound like?" I don't know. We 
we listen to Godsmack, different things like that. Because as soon as somebody hears something, they're going to say, it doesn't sound anything like Godsmack <laughs> or, or Tool or something right. like that. It's, but there's definitely influences. It's funny. She says that to all the bands. She's like, so what, what would you compare yourself to? And most of the bands are just like, um, ourselves. Yeah. And then my, then my wife says, oh, you guys sounded like Puddle of Mud. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> we're actually no, thinking we about... Not. We're actually thinking about starting a Skull King cover band. So the nights <laughs> that we don't play, we can play. That's awesome. Yeah, we're thinking That'd be about a good that. Idea. No, I asked that question because... So many bands, like, either some people do try to sound a lot like their influences. Like, like Ramora goes, oh, we try to sound like ourselves, but we sound a lot like Black Tie and Murder. Like, bands like that. But I guess. It's just funny that they're, most times they're just like, oh, we sound like ourselves. I don't know. I just want to know, like, who influenced your sound and if you think you sound like that right. or if you're trying to go well, off. Of- well, it's, I guess it's a, it's a pretty good question. I mean, if, 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 you, if you sound more like... Dave Matthews, or if you sound oh, like no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 that's no, no, just no, an no, example. No. Yeah, or if you sound Bad more, example. if you sound like more, um, I don't know, damn Yankees, or if you sound like nice damn Yankees, <laughs> <laughs> um, or I don't know, Kill Switch Engage, or, or or Tool. I mean, there's there's so many different components of music out there that I mean, if you turn the distortion on, you sound like a lot of bands, really, and honestly. Everything's been done before. It's just, right. a mat- it's just a matter of rearranging the notes in, in different kinds of configurations. So, I mean, we're going to sound like a, a lot of different bands that are out there, but... but All mashed have- into one. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, well, and- like, Nick, Nick listens to a lot of Kill Switch Engage, <laughs> so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see some influences come from there. Like, I'm a big, uh, you know, I'm heavy into, like you know Megadeth and and uh yeah. bands like that you know so I incorporate some of that into there but then the different styles that each person brings and everything it's uh it definitely you know changes up the arrangements and all you'll see a little draw from this you'll see a little draw from that and you know which I'm sure is true with a lot of bands can you move over a little bit? Why? Do you because want to? You're you're me- you're ruining my favorite part of the night. Oh. Every time Dave, he likes to look at guy, Dave, he pops his head over when he thinks something's funny. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There he is. Dave. What's up, Dave? I just All love right. seeing his beautiful face. He always pops his head over. I like how you motioned her to come closer to me, and she just moved backwards. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> we so, love you, Dave. So let's take a trip back to October 2010, where you go, hey, I want to start a band. And how did you guys end up finding each other? Uh, this is Paul. Actually, it started before that. I, I put an ad on Craigslist and got contacted by Cliff was in a band called Iron Vein. I think there's been a couple different Iron Vein. Uh, there's one from Chicago that uh, it wasn't that one. <laughs> and uh, well, cause, cause they were a little upset that there was another iron vein or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, that ended up falling apart a little while later. And Cliff and I stuck together and, and uh, got an old drummer that I had. And, and then he moved on and, and we, got, we got Brian. But before that even, um, we got together with Nick. And that was through Craigslist also. Yeah, because I didn't join the band until the summer. Yeah. And Nick, like this Nick summer? Was, that was like Yeah, I had to wait and see year. if they were going to suck or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys. I don't like your style. I, I'm good. Yeah, that's cool because I'm quitting anyway. So. Yeah, so you know, basically, um, I was trying to put together a band um, from scratch and looking for musicians on Craigslist or whatever means. And I stumbled upon a you know Paul and Cliff's ad, um, an all original band focusing nothing but originals in Chicago. Um, Definitely what I was interested in doing because I've been doing this, you know, since I've been in sixth grade. Um, so we hooked up, uh, tried out. We all had the same mindset, but more importantly, um, writing together has to be what really clicks. You know, we can all play, but can you write and create? That's really where the magic happens. And I think we had that from day one, really. That's where this uh, this song came about. Not one more day was actually was actually a song that that Paul um, Paul and I introdu- introduced to um, in this band called Iron Vein. Um, and not one more day is one of those tunes that that is a an idea of what we sounded like back in October of. That was the first song you guys wrote. Well, not the first song we wrote, but it was the first it was the first kind of idea of what what made uh, what made Skull King what Skull King is. And then 
as you as you go on, I mean, Punching Water and Never and and Whistleblower, those are kind of more, more recent recent tunes we've written. But not one more day is is just a just an idea of what we sounded like back in October of last year. Yeah, we've know? we've yeah. definitely evolved. You know, every song that we write um, pushes us into a different direction, and you know, you know, now we are Skull King from you know, when we first started. So we have a lot of songs that we're in the process of recording right now, a lot of different subjects that we're writing about. Um, so we're looking forward to releasing some of these in the next couple months. So tonight we're going to hear how many different songs you guys? I think we got six, six songs to you six guys. Songs. So Punching Water, Never, Fall From Grace, I Am Here, Not One More Day, and Whistleblower. So what is the writing process like for you guys? Is there somebody that just works on lyrics and then you guys well as a singer i i write the lyrics and you know the vocal melody lines but there's it's it's everybody has their own part that we put the song together you know what i mean so you know we come up with ideas cliff will come up with a bass line or even brian will come up with something paul will come up with something and it's really you know, montage of what everybody else yeah we, we write together I mean when we're at practice you know I'll be writing down lyrics or things like that um, but it's it's really a, a cumulative of effort from all four of us you know one of the things we've been pushing too is percussiveness in the in the like the guitars and the bass and everything where they're kind of you know doing the same thing you got a guitar doing alpha -da 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 -da, like that then you're gonna have the bass drum doing that kind of stuff too we're starting to head more that direction um, just basically so that's tighter. that's something that you're going to see in the future, yeah. You know, and the recordings we're working on now and everything. A lot um, more tight. Yeah, not yeah. so not so much on the the songs you'll be playing tonight, but where we've been going in the last few months that we haven't recorded yet. It's kind of the direction we're going. It's amazing. There's one. It, it is amazing. There's one fly left in here from two weeks ago. I thought all the flies died in. Son of a bitch. I think that I, one came in with Cliff. You know what's really <laughs> scary is when you go to like a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and, uh, well, in addition, like like in February, and there's a fly buzzing around because they don't live that long. And you know no. it's like, well, they're obviously eating and reproducing on what? <laughs> right? Come on, so now man. next time I'm a, a food eater, yeah, eat at Chinese right. restaurants, I'm always going to think about that. Eating? <laughs> Shit. Oh man. <laughs> so. <Yeah. how> <laughs> How about the name Skull King? Where did that come from? <laughs> Why is it everybody's looking at me? Well, um, apparently Iron, nobody Iron, knows but you. <laughs> Iron Bay couldn't claim it. Well, Maroon Five was already taken. Yeah. And, uh, so, so that was, was our so second was choice Manilow. was Skull was Skull King. Well, I mean, if you went with Maroon Five, you'd have a pretty well, awesome drummer. hit singer called yeah. Hit. Yeah, the like, like you know, you know, we yeah. wanted to come up. We wanted to come up with a name that reflected our sound, which you know, we wanted to be aggressive and in your face. And um, you know, when you hear the name Skull King, you know it's not going to be Maroon Five. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we're we're going to knock down music. or elevator yeah. music. You know, we're going to knock your, your <laughs> you know, we'll knock your teeth out type music. And that's what you know, Skull King. And you know, it's also we want to. You know, come up with something from a marketing standpoint for our fans. You know, we sell a lot of T-shirts at our shows, so we wanted a logo and an image that you know people would think is cool. Um, and associate and, with Skull King. And associate with Skull King. So, but at the same time, it. like the beginning of Whistleblower, you'll hear Nick all sounded sexy and stuff. <laughs> so, sexy, it's aggressive. It's aggressive, but Nick can actually sing too. Aggressively well, thank sexy. You. Thank you. I'll, I'll pay you off later. <laughs> <laughs> your, your logo, who designed that for you? Paul, why don't you take that one? Um, a friend of mine from a band I was in back in high school, uh, he, he does a lot of artwork, so we contacted him. Uh, his name's Eric Intervold out of Morris, and uh, he just came up with some different ideas, gave them to us, and we, we picked from those ideas. And it's been stuck with you guys. Yeah, ever yeah since and, you know, time. and it, it has evolved too. And, and we actually, you know, wherever the band goes, we will probably, you know, evolve our logo. And any tour that we go on or anything in the future, you know, I'm sure we will change as the market changes. So, now you guys mentioned you're recording songs right now. Where are you recording those at? We're in the process. Actually, mm -hmm. we're we're going to be recording it in our own home studio that Paul has at his house. Um, but we recently uh, recorded at the University of St. Francis Digital um, Performing uh, Recording Studio. Um, but we're going to take our time on this one. Paul is amazing as far as, you know, recording us and, and that. So this is going to be through our own studio. 
Well, not one more day was done at was done at your at, place. In Paul's place. Yeah, right. but we had certain I'm limitations here. that we don't have now. Right. I am so, here, yeah. fall from grace. Those three were were done at, at Paul's place. Right. Punching water never and whistleblower were actually done at the uh, University of St. Francis. The technology that they have, you know, nowadays for recording, has, you know, has come a long way. So we're able to, you know, record our own sound and, and, and yeah. And he's working off Pro Tools, so, you know. With that, they should sponsor us and give us free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we like free stuff. Yes. What have you learned differently from working with Paul and recording, and then the where where was the other place? San University of St. Francis. Yeah, St. Francis. In Juliet. In yeah. Juliet. What 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 are the differences that you see recording wise between the two places? Well, when we record at Paul's house, he gives us he gives us drinks and beer, <laughs> oh. so that's kind of a nice bonus. Um, but no, seriously. I like. I like. He gives us drinks and beer, oh. so that's kind of a nice bonus. Um, but no, seriously, I like. I like working with Paul because he's a member of the band. He knows the sound that we're trying to go for, and no disrespect to any producer that we worked in the past, because mm -hmm. Albie Odom, who we worked with, was awesome. I can't say enough about Albie. Um, great guy. A great guy. Yeah. Great guy, and and he really captured our sound the way we wanted it to be captured. But when you're in a recording studio. There are time constraints because the clock's ticking and you know the dollar signs are are, are coming up. So that that's probably one of the biggest things. It's a little stressful. You're kind of under the gun a little bit more than when you're at your own place. Yeah, and along with uh, money also is just what we're able to afford for our own studio as opposed to University of St. Francis. It's almost like they had unlimited funds. You walk in there, it's just like oh my god. You look at the studio. So we don't have that. Uh, I yeah, that that level. When I when I recorded my vocals, I think the mic I used was like a four thousand dollar mic. Yeah, you saying. know, and yeah. so. But but sitting there with Elby, it was it was really nice because I was able to learn a lot, you know, off of watching him. In addition to what we were already doing to you know, use, previous to that, right? To use yourself when you're recording. Exactly. What yeah. was he? Was he using Pro Tools too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't with them when they did that. So. Yeah. This is. These will actually be my first recordings with the guys. Who was your drummer before that you guys had recorded with? John Savage. Was yeah, his name? John Savage yeah. was our original drummer who, uh, who um, you know, recorded our first song. So, yep. Now, do you guys already have a CD out, or is it just songs that are recorded that you guys have released? We just have them out, you know, on sites like Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, things like that. So we don't have a CD yet. But the next, so we don't have a CD yet. But the next um, group of songs that we're putting together will be in an album. How many are you planning on recording? Nine. Oh nine. Was it nine or ten? It was uh, ten. Yeah, it was, it was it's nine quite a or few. ten. You know, Although, by, by the time we get into the studio and start doing this, it's going to be more like twelve. Yeah. It's just going to be more than that. I've yeah. got twenty more oh, yeah. in my head right now, man. Yeah, we actually need to put a cap on it, or else we're never going to. Because <laughs> the reason why we haven't done it yet is because we, we're trying to polish the ones up so they're ready to go. And then all of a sudden we'll come up with another idea. And it's like, well, we can't go record yet. We got to get this ready because this is so good. We can't not put this on there. So at some point we're just gonna have to cut it off and say, okay, we're gonna do it. Um, but we do have. I mean, we don't necessarily have a CD out where you can go buy, but we've been passing CDs out at our shows that and, we've just been putting a number of songs on. And then Reverb Nation too. There's how many songs? Like eleven songs or something like that. They're the complete songs, and there's no money constraints on or anything like that. You could just go on there and, and pull them right off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to hear them. <laughs> Let's listen to one. What are the first three songs that we're going to hear? Uh, Punching Water, Never, and Fall from Grace. Let's cut it. Let's do two, two, and two. Awesome. Like two, two, and two. This two, is, two. Uh, kick it off with Punching Water. Dave. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm 
family thing. You're listening to the Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. And we're back. Morgan, I'll take this because you just sat there like a fool. Because you look like you were going to say something. No, I was just rocking out to that. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. Because anyways is not a word. Morgan, take it away. I no, I Okay. Well, we're here with Skull King. Ow! And we just heard two of their awesome songs. What were the names of those again? Punching Water and Never. And what are those songs about? And how did you create the song title Punching Water? Well, you know, sometimes you got to punch something. And punching, so you punch wa- water. punching water is a lot <laughs> less hazardous than punching a brick wall. So. He gets so angry. How no, you know, pun- pun- punching, punching water is basically, you know. You're not going to write a song called Punching <laughs> Pillows. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Don't be so sure. Yeah, don't be so sure. Yeah. That'll be the sequel to Punching Water. It's Punching Pillows. They upgraded. It all depends on the venue. <laughs> could be punching. So I'm sorry, you were saying. You know, before Morgan. One of, one of the things that I, that I try to do when I when I do write lyrics and melody lines, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is uh, leave them open to interpretation. So what might have one meaning to one fan might have a different meaning to another, and a different meaning to me, and a different meaning to everybody in the band. So. That's what I try to do. So, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. yeah so, exactly. what punching water might mean to me might mean something different to you, Morgan. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> gotcha. And what's the other song about? Never. Yeah. Well, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Never making the same mistake twice. Never like that. See? Dave, do you have any ideas, Dave? Your ideas on that are, one? Are you, are you, you kidding know, me? <laughs> you know, my, my feeling, my feeling, my feeling about music is. is you know, it is a personal thing to a person. So when you hear a song, you know, what, what's the meaning to you? Maybe the, the first time you heard Never or the first time you heard Punching Water was the day you were having, a, you know, a really shitty day or you were having a great day. And that would kind of determine what the song meant to you. So that's what I try to do. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, everybody should be able to own the song their own way. So. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's what we try to do. Yeah. I know, Brian, you were saying that you had a question for us. Yeah, I had a yet. question. It's not, it's not about us or anything like that, but just like uh, before I joined these guys, I was bouncing around from band to band a lot uh, for uh, quite a while, and I was always pushing, like, you know, hey, let's do some originals. Let's make some original music. You know, let's make our, do our own thing. And it was, it's, it's been hard to find something around this area, Chicago area, it seems like, where there's original music going on where the scenes seem to be blossoming more, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So I just wonder from your guys' point of view, uh, how do you, which way do you see that scene going now? Are you seeing more bands coming out with their own stuff now and, and, and fewer of the cover bands, that kind of thing going on? To, for some of the local shows we've been to recently, there's actually, for most of them, been a pretty good turnout. You know, whereas, I don't know, I, when I've been in bands, it's just like, Dad, come to our show, please, Dad, Dad, Mom, <laughs> Mom and Dad, yeah. sisters. Come, please, to our show. Oh, no one wants to come. All right, great. And my friends are like, dude, I'm going to fucking get drunk and not come to your show because I'm busy getting drunk or something. <laughs> Fuck. And then we go to these shows, and it's like, these guys actually have some pretty big turnouts. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Uh, I was probably in crappy bands, well, I guess. What I will say is that, from personal experience, and, and I know Luco was in a band, too, where a lot of our band members wanted to do covers, Um <laughs> my my old band wanted to do covers of like Metallica, Von Sunfold, and Alice in Chains, and uh, and we <laughs> we were like doing two three cover songs per set, and I wanted to do more original music. Uh, I like don't get me wrong, I like doing covers, but I think it's better as recording purpose, maybe to just release it as a cover, maybe not play it live, unless like for some reason it's like really good and you really want to do it, because I think that live shows should be more of your own music. Because who wants to go out there and be like, oh, I'm going to see you? Unless you're like a cover band. Like, don't or get me wrong. With like, with the covers, I think another thing, if you were going to do covers, to kind of make them your own, not mm-hmm. play it exactly how they right. do it, but, you know, change it up and, I don't know. Right. But well, the, like, and, and, like you said, and, and, and I don't mean like tribute Switch, bands. Cover, it's just like they made it their own. Right. Well, right. There's some great tribute bands out here. Cashmere oh, does a great yeah, show. Up. I mean, there's some. Like Judas Beast and Blackened. Black and, oh, sure, absolutely. And right. those are cool. That has its place, but. You know, I'd, well, love I, to play. I'd love to see the Chicago I scene. One of our, one, I mean, one of our goal, at least my goal, 
I, I, I think the guys uh, share this. One of our goals is not just to like get bigger and have more people listen to our music and all that kind of stuff, but we'd like to be in a music scene like you've got the you know you're pushing the Boston thing with yeah. the, on the jacket you got your Boston fucking yeah you know and there was the San Francisco scene and I mean we don't want to do the LA scene we don't want to do that but you know I'd love to see the Chicago scene come back and have yes. some great bands come out of here you know it's it's really hard it seems like like I've said this before with these guys ever since karaoke and DJs People don't go see live bands as much. I know 20, well, years ago, I don't want to date myself, but there were can I no... Date you? Can yeah, I date you? No. <laughs> Only under the table. Um, but there was like, there's uh, I mean, you know, all you would do was go see live bands. There were no karaoke or, or stuff I'm like that. I'm seeing too much, my eyes. Oh, yeah. my God. Good thing I guys we're, really, we're, we're a really, really close band. I can tell. Yeah. But, but, but DJs and then with all this, like, Xbox and all this stuff, People are doing all that crap. It's like we need to get people out seeing live bands more. With it's with totally different. Going to shows, you know, I've noticed, you know, cause I, like I said, when I was in the band, my friends like never really came out, but like people go bad. see the karaoke and, and DJs, and then with all this like Xbox and all this stuff, people are doing all that crap. It's like we need to get people out seeing live bands more. With it's with totally different. Going to shows, you know, I've noticed, you know, cause I, like I said, when I was in the band, DJs, and then with all this like Xbox and all this stuff. People are doing all that crap. It's like we need to get people out seeing live bands more. With it's with totally different. Going to shows, you know, I've noticed, you know, cause I, like I said, when I was in the band, my friends like never really came out, but like yeah, mine didn't either. And I, I would promote it like a month in advance, being like, okay, here, save the date, and it's like calling them up the day of. Are you there. coming? I'll be there, dude. Yes, yeah, I'll they be never there. fucking show up. I was like, then, some friends you are. It seems like now that we're doing the show and like we're promoting other local bands, like I've told my friends, like, hey, dude, come out. We're get wasted. This band's fucking awesome, and they come out. And, like my friends actually come out now. I, maybe they. have just drank too much. Like, when uh, have your sport, friends come, come out to shows? Uh, the Maggot Twat Remora show. <laughs> okay, that was that was fine, but everything Duh. else, no. Maggot Twat. Yeah, maggot I think twat. we're changing our name yes. right now, man. Maggot Twat is... We are Maggot Twat. The first time I was like, Maggot Twat, what the that, fuck? That's <laughs> why we're Skull King, because that name was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Maroon 5 Maggot Twat. All right, we'll go with third, Skull third King. Third choice then. was Skull King. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like, I'm like, dude, you guys got to check out these bands. They're fucking sweet. And my friends actually came out, which was kind of funny. Nody and Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Listening. There was somebody else. I don't know his name. You know, but, but know. the oh, music. Jay. 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 Or maybe I don't know. I don't remember. I was drunk. Yeah. You know, the, the music scene in in Chicago is always evolving. I mean, there's clubs that are coming and going. New places open and full all the time. Um, but as far as the metal scene, it seems like it is starting to pick up steam. Uh, I think you know sites like Facebook and Reverb Nation have brought a lot of the bands together. And that's the bottom line. Everybody has to work together to create a scene, right. mm -hmm. not work against each other. Um, and here's one thing that really bothers me in the scene is, you know, we play a lot of shows and we have a lot of bands open for us and, and whatnot. I think the fans should stay for all the bands. If there's six bands on the bill, they should stay from the very first band. I don't, you know, even if they start at four in the afternoon and the headliner goes on at ten, it would be nice if the fans stayed the whole time. Oh, I totally agree. As, yeah. as well as it, like it, the bands too. Bands sometimes, depending on who they are, they tend to leave after they play their yeah, set. I, I think it's disrespectful. Yeah, even, yeah, I think so. Bands. I think so as well. Off. You know, we when we have bands open for us, you know, we try to be up there in the front. You know, mm -hmm. we're in the front headbanging, and you know, we're we're probably the first. Cliff and I are probably the first ones up in front of the stage. <laughs> Seriously. There's two people drunk too. So, yeah, there's two drunk guys from smoking <laughs> up on the stage. But I mean, we're there. We're there to have a good time. We love metal. We love music, and that's what we do. And I think you have to lead by example. So when right. we go and do a show with somebody, you know, we want to give them the courtesy. They they work hard. They rehearse, you know, and we want to support that. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that kind of like helps. I don't know, like you know how you're saying people just like leave after their set is. You know, when you become friends with the other bands and, like, they get you shows and you get them shows, like, you know, to play together or whatever. And, uh, I mean, then you just want to you want to stay and watch them, you know, because it's like your friends' bands, you know. You get, you know these guys now and, I don't know, that's another thing. That I, I just, I don't know why anybody would leave a, a rock and metal club Especially at 9 o'clock at night when right. there's oh, yeah. dollar beers and the night is young, you know. What, what could be better than a, a bunch of metal bands and cheap drinks I mean right. stick around especially the shows where you know you have to pay to get in and it's like you you stay for one band then you you know 86 the fucking joint you know it's like right. you just paid 
eight bucks. Now you're going home. You might as well just spend more money on booze Mm -hmm. and get drunk, which I do a lot. And that's why no, like every single (laughs) show that we're at, every local show we go like fuck another local show. Every every show we go to, I'm doing all the promoting. Luco's doing all the drinking for both of us, so I can talk and he could just. Hey! There you go. This fucking rocks! <laughs> I'm gonna grab another beer. Morgan, take, Cause, take care of this. Because apparently, okay, so last week we had a band. Oh shit, why am I forgetting? Okay, we had Dark Atropy. Atrophy? Ah, I keep putting the P into it. Entropy in it. And they came on, and their drummer, the first thing he remembers is the first show that we sponsored, Luco. <laughs> Grabbed this guy's ass. I got drunk and I slapped his ass and said, good show, man. And he told him. I don't remember that at all. You told him to carve. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, the, the name the of the band guy, in his chest hair. The other, he had, he was rocking out with his, you know, shirt off. I'm like, dude, you should totally shave the name of your band in your chest. And hair. that was their first impression. I of don't him. remember that before either, they keep, came on the show. It's like I remember you. You were I mean, the guy that was, grabbed my ass. I'm just thinking the Blackhawks chest Hawks, hair. This guy. Well, yeah. Brian has our logo he had shaved, a good, shaved good some, someplace on this body. The Blackhawks. You want to show him, Brian? Too, so I was yeah. boozing. So it's like every time I poop, that's like embossed. Nice. Yeah. So you guys have played fifty shows, Ish. rough, roughly. roughly. Has there been a favorite place that you guys have played, and then the worst place that you've played? Oh, <laughs> let's let's just stay with the good places. We love play. all the we places. We love everybody. You don't Any, have to lie. Anybody, you can well, tell no, the truth here. Yeah, anybody we that'll have us that's really into the scene, you know. I mean, there's always the clubs that are just like we just want the money. We want the money, you know. Just get people oh, in there yeah. to drink and stuff. Definitely. And, you know, been there. Yeah, but you know, any place right now that supports metal, and and in live music and all that kind of stuff, you know, we're all about that. And those clubs, a lot of those clubs are evolving too. So you know, some places that might not be cool to play mm-hmm. now, a year from now, you know, are. I, I would think currently, uh, you know, my personal favorite would be in our own hometown, some something like Bada Brew. I like Bada Brew a lot. Plus, it's only like two two blocks from my place so i can stumble home after the show which yeah. is kind of convenient yeah so I, maybe that's why i like it because yeah. like he's already <laughs> had stumbling before the show yeah. penny road pub for me penny road pub penny road is, pub a, is, a, is a far drive and when i yeah, have to get up at four drive. the next day so i get home and get like an hour or two of sleep that really sucks but i, I like that place a lot and the sound i think is awesome that's the, you're playing yeah. i like this i like that place too not, penny not, road's not, been a fun yeah. place to play not I'll, downstairs the sound isn't the best but but upstairs the sound's really good although i almost got in a fight with firehouse there that one night you almost but got in a fight right with story. firehouse. Well, almost, yeah. Brian almost got us thrown out because you were mooning people from the oh. stage. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, tell the story. You, what did do you tell. say? Uh, do tell. Do tell. Uh, Start like, from the beginning. What's what's the story? What were you doing? <laughs> this was at oh, Penny Road Pub. This was at Penny Road. Too much caffeine. I don't know. No, they were taking the banner. They were taking the banner down. We actually have a Skull King banner that goes across the back of the stage. It's not a full size backdrop, but it's a banner. You know. And they were taking it down, they're rolling it up, and they started walking across the stage. So I just hid myself behind to drop my pants. So basically, you know, the skulking ass was going across the stage. Well, <laughs> and I lifted the banner. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess I guess the owner noticed it and everything, and had the bouncer come up to me, who uh, proceeded to let me know that the fucking door was over there if I did it again. So. You'd be like, dude, I'm in the band. Get the and we, and we, and but we, and you know what? Back. He didn't seem to mind or anything like that. He was very no. cool about it. He wasn't a dick about it at all or anything like that. It was just all fun. But then all he said something roll. later on to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> then everything was cool. We, well, we smoothed was everything same, over. That was the same night we got the French tickler out of the bathroom, remember? Because blew that up. We were playing beach ball. With yeah, it. that's right. <laughs> yeah, you condoms. know, if you rub those things on your hair, it does stick to blonde. So, because there was the table of three girls that weren't paying attention. So, you know, I got that thing all staticky and stuck it on the back of her head. And she just started looking around, which was great, because that sucker just stuck right there, man. So it was just like big French. Dave's dying over here. Well, yeah, what I can say about Brian, not only can he hammer it out on the drums, but he can make every show interesting. What's, no doubt. What's the most embarrassing thing he's ever done on stage for you guys? Brian? While you were playing? Well, when we set him on fire in Kankakee, that was kind of fun. <laughs> Fire? Yeah. On fire? Well, no, you know, not we, yeah, we, he's he's dreaming again. But you know what? We didn't do we do that? that? Well, see, because we get the we're in touch with Jim Rose, right? And and you know, that's he a had little, the whole that's thing. kind of a little secret, but we can we can talk about that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, if you remember that, like a lot of people know that from the Simpsons when Homer Simpson was up on the stage taking the cannonball in the gut, that kind of thing. So uh, you know, he's 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 been helping us out a little bit and everything. And you know, Jim Rose. 
I do not. We are we are we, you know, we don't really publicize it too much, but we are working with Jim Rose of the Jim Rose Circus sh Side Show, um, and he's uh, out of Nevada. So like a right. like a it, it was with the Lollapalooza. They they went out on the Lollapalooza thing, and they were doing all the side show kind all of right, thing. All right, that, I don't, I don't know him, no, but I know what you're talking right. about. Yeah, so that was that, that guy. Yeah. Right. So he's worked I really. The guy with I like the dumbbells from his nips. Exactly. Yeah. That and crazy I really, son of a bitch. Yeah. He's pretty. I really, he's pretty really crazy. want to be set on fire behind the drums, and that would be the guy who knows how to do it. Well, that's what Jim told me when I talked to him. He's like, "What are you guys going to do for your show?" And I'm like, "Well, maybe we'll set Brian on fire." And he's like, "That's a great idea." Yeah. That is great. So. I'm Didn't all we for do that? It. I yeah. wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I'm all for Did it. Did you have but to write a will before you decided to do that? Oh, well, of course. No. We had a, we had Brian sign away. Not rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, but we are working with Jim Rose, and um, you know he's worked with Godsmack, um, Nine Inch Nails, Marilyn Manson, and he's kind of behind the scenes doing some things for us. And we don't really talk about it that much, but it is something that's kind of a big deal for us when he when he found us uh, on Reverb Nation, and he's been working with us for several months. And it's one of these things that's kind of a behind the scenes type deal. I gotta show him my taser marks, man. <laughs> oh yeah. That was interesting when you got tased six times. What? Well, tased nine. during I think it was eight or nine times. Was it eight times? By a eight cop? or nine times. Yeah. yeah. No, what? by 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 four cops. By four somebody cops. <laughs> somebody likes the party. <laughs> If well, that's okay. They were they were very nice about it. <laughs> so, we're gonna tease you now. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> but you never a, know. That's what a story I probably shouldn't get into. No, now. I think it's what you should. I need the bottom to line. The bottom line is it you have to no, come. It had nothing to do with the band. It's just one of those days. You were you drunk ever... and you went, "Hey, tease me." No, actually, I don't drink, which is probably the bad part because I really don't have an excuse. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. my god. I like so, the sober party. Tease me. <laughs> It was fun. So, <laughs> how did this happen? No, 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 no. It was at we'll just say, well. <laughs> uh, you can say it. We're not censored. Well, yeah, but I. All, all right, right. Calm okay, down okay. over okay. there, Mo. You're, he doesn't want to do it, and you're like, no, do it, do it. Come well, on. Uh, Nick right. brought it hey, up, and now I'm interested. You ever have a you ever have a bad reaction to a medication? Oh. You know, I had a bad reaction to a medication, and uh, so <laughs> an they, honest medication. They, they thought, yeah, they thought maybe Cops the like best thing would be for me to go to the down. hospital, but I didn't want to go to the hospital. So I guess they they wanted to carry me there, but I didn't want to go. So, you know, it's push like comes to shove. <laughs> yeah, push comes to shove, literally. And again, you know, kudos to the Romeoville police because they were very cool about uh, it. You know, Romeoville. They, they tased me politely. How do you tease politely? <laughs> Nine times. <laughs> they didn't. They do couldn't it. do it. Like, okay, we're gonna get this guy, and we gotta get him to the hospital, or whatever. We're so we're tase him just to get him under three control. Three for you tase to know you're gonna be tased. Over and over. The first they were just time. trying to get me to cooperate, you know, and I didn't want to cooperate. And then when they tased me, it was great because I actually was counteracting the medication thing that I had. Do it again. It was real medication. I mean, it was real medication. I wasn't Thank you, like sir. Doing May I have another? <laughs> was it you know, one of the the, it was the gun it, ones that shoot out the little? Stinger it things, was the or was it one of the little, little prongs? Oh. oh, so it was cool because they got to reuse it. But you know, I had a bad reaction to an antibiotic. It sticks so, your skin, and so I went a little mental. Yeah, oh, burns, burns. Well, they started. I think you're on still my... a little mental if you think this was cool. Well, it was because it cleared my head. See, they had me pin... they had me pinned down on the ground, so I was face first on the ground. I kept like pushing off, and I like, give me one more, yeah, like, motherfuckers. The one cop's trying to handcuff me, and I grabbed his handcuffs, and he's yelling at me, "Look, go my fucking handcuffs!" You know, and uh, and then I had another one that was kneeing me in the ribs, trying to get me to come up. But, uh, oh rock and roll. Yeah, rock See what roll, happens right? when you hang around with Skull King? <laughs> I'm going to get yeah. tased, All kinds of shit. All kinds tased of shit. me in the leg, and it wasn't working, so he came up and started tasing me on the back of my arm and everything. So, you know, I had a whole bunch of tracks going up my arm. It was cool, but it was clear in my head, you know? It was counteracting the reaction I was having, so it was clear in my head. So as soon as I felt the taser go off, I was like, Oh my god, I can think now, you know. So Do it again. It was great. Yeah, so I was fighting them then. Like a little so jump start. Give me a little it. more juice. Yeah. I had kept going, but I ran out of gas, you know. I just got tired. <laughs> cops are he Dude, cops are heavy. I don't know if you guys know that. Because they eat donuts. <laughs> no, you they were, no, I think it's all the stuff they're packing or something, you know. But they were Yeah. Is that your first encounter with the c cops? No, but that was, that was, <laughs> that was, that was the latest. That was, that was my memorable. latest and greatest. And I'm by, I'm by no means a criminal, but I, I, I do get a little adventurous. So hey, I guess you could say it like that. 
on that note, I think we should rock out to two more songs. Yeah, I need a recover. <laughs> what are the got? next two that we're going to play? Fall from Grace and I Am Here. Dude, get the mic. I'm here, too. <laughs> I am here. Are you deep here? throating the mic? <laughs> I know. Fall from Grace and I Am Here. Oh, my God. He swallowed the cord and everything. <laughs>
You're listening to the Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. And we're back to the Metal Experience, broadcasting from 4055 North Milwaukee Avenue, across from the Portage Theater. And tonight we have been sitting oh. here <laughs> with the clumsy <laughs> Skull King, guys. Skull King! <laughs> well, maybe one of them's just a little clumsy there. Dude, that's my head, man. That's <laughs> Two my of them skull. are a little clumsy. <laughs> But anyway, that's how we got our name. We've been uh, listening to your music, and uh, our what? sound guy Dave accidentally played three of your songs. You fool, Dave! You rather fool. than two. It's so not an accident. He really likes that song. I don't blame him. Me. Dave, what did fired. What did we just hear? Not one more day. Not one more day. And I am here <laughs> in Fall from Grace, and I think we have one more whistle. Not in that order, though. Not in that order. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think we have whistleblower coming up. So. So, so you were saying one of those songs? Out, let's go to Reverb Nation and get them in order. Yeah, I mean, if you want to hear more of our stuff, what? you can go to um, Reverb Nation uh, forward slash Skull King. Or you can go to the Stage Bar Thursday night. Or you can come to Stage Bar Thursday or night. Or Zelmo's in January. Or Zelmo's January 7th. Or Gast House which January 14th. Is, or The Monsters of Metal January 28th. Which is better because we got way more songs than what's on Reverb um, Nation. But yeah, you know, if you want to hear us... Live, of course. Go to our Facebook page or Twitter or whatever, and uh, you know we have an events tab. Do you have fl- and come live and check videos? It out. We have some videos on our uh, Reverb Nation, and we do have um, a Skull King YouTube channel, which we have some live stuff that we've done in the past. Any but, music uh, videos that you guys are planning on making? Um, nothing in the works, but you know, definitely something that's going to happen, no doubt. Um, but we have a lot of songs, uh, a lot of new stuff that we haven't recorded that you know. You, You'd have to come and see us live to uh, check it out. And apparently you guys are going to be making skulking urinal cakes now. Of course. <laughs> this course. idea That's was all, brought on it's by... All, it's all part of Brian. the master plan that we have. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Who just wants to leave your impression everywhere you go? <laughs> I think we should be on everything. Why? <laughs> just because it's fun. <laughs> we, we actually have we have a merchandising manager, uh, Vinny Duarte, who's not here tonight, but uh, you know we have... <laughs> We have yeah, Vinny. Yeah. We have T-shirts. What else? He has all kinds of stuff. Stuff in the works. So and work keychains in the works or where can we get it? No. You can get it at all of our shows. You know, we have shirts for sale at our shows and keychains and things like that. So you just got to come out and check us out, man. But in the future, it's going to be like shot glass and, ever, and all kinds of different stuff. We know? have to have Skull King shot glasses. It's mm. something that we, we find very off. practical. Yeah, for like in our, in our everyday and lives. So no doubt, Skull King shot glasses. Are, are you guys going to be selling the urinal cakes at shows? We, we plan <laughs> on it. Dave wants well, to piss on you. <laughs> no, we'll see, on the it. plan is we're going to put them in the urinals before the show, so they'll be there forever after. So if you want one, you're free to swim for it. <laughs> that's how that's Mom, look work. what I got out of the pisser. But if you come are you out, kidding me? Put that back. If you come out of one with a skulking <laughs> urinal cake, dude, Cliff will sign it. <laughs> how are you going to sign something that's slippery in blood. and wet? Like uh, we that. do that at every show. Yeah, so Cliff that's nothing. That's t-shirt. nothing new. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been. You should have been to our Kankakee show. That was fun. Slippery. And we wet. signed all kinds of slippery and wet things. Oh my. At least oh I my. did. <laughs> oh <my>. Did <laughs> you remember? <laughs> no, unfortunately. Yeah. No. La, la, well, yeah. La, what la, happens la, in Kankakee la, stays la, in Kankakee. La, 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 la. Um, so Vinny, we have stories. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Venue wise, you guys have played a lot of places. Is there a place that you haven't played yet that you want to? Yes. Hard, Hard Rock Cafe, Chicago. We would like to play. Um, and Aragon Ballroom. Aragon Hard Ballroom. Rock Cafe. Pretty that, sweet. That's my dream. I want to do the Aragon. That's awesome. that's got to do the Aragon. That's the next stop. I've seen so many great shows there. Yeah, I saw Rob Zombie there. Oh. Yeah, did you see? Like, I saw him with White Zombie there like three no, times. No, I'm not that old. You saw White Zombie? <laughs> I am, I am. White Zombie, if you saw White Zombie, that's fucking awesome. Oh, oh dude, White Zombie. I wish I got It was to. the stages up there, and all he's got is red Christmas tree lights everywhere. What? And that was his lighting. Dude, it was beautiful. <gasps> oh, it was Rob. Beautiful. White Zombie's so, so much better than Rob Zombie. It doesn't matter. Either way, ball. Rob Zombie's involved, and I love him. So much. Dude, it was I love you, Dave. We recently, uh, we recently did a show last Saturday at um, the University of St. Francis in Joliet, which was a pretty cool venue to play at. Uh, we did a benefit for the local Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and that was a oh, that toy drive. No, it was uh, no, it, it, no it was, it was actually <laughs> there was no toy. Brothers, there sisters, were toys yeah. there, but it, there was not it those wasn't kind a, of toys. Not those kind of toys. Oh. But you know, we had a oh, where'd you get that? But no, we had a big benefit. <laughs> we had a big benefit show, and we had you know a, our our buddies in approaching. Okay, Dawn. you can go. <laughs> 
play with us and uh, <laughs> no, it's all right. Yeah, but the proceeds actually went to their actual programs. It didn't. It didn't yeah, they try to, to they try to match a, you know adults with um, you know a youth that needs a big brother and just to spend some time with them. So, so it was a great it was a great show and it was a cool place to play uh, to actually play at a, a big venue like a university. So and you guys cool walked show. out with some kids. And, well, we didn't walk out. Any, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't walk out any kids, but uh, me and Dave would have. Come on, we are kid. kids. Would have been like but, um, Molly Shores adopted. <laughs> Other places that we'd like to play, you know, we, we are working. House of Blues. Yeah, House of Blues. Um, That'd be cool. We are working on, you know, doing some national national venues like Allstate Arena and things like that. So we got a lot of things cooking. Um, so just got to stay tuned. Phones are going to do. Are we playing Angry Birds again? No. No. Sorry. My wife just texted me. You nice. could give a shout out. Hi, wife. The <laughs> shout out. Yeah, she wants, she wants to know what happened in Kankakee, but you can't tell her about the two sisters in the uh, underground jail. Though. <laughs> my wife said that the toy drive was from my school. We stand corrected then. Okay. <laughs> Speaking about shout outs, I got to shout out to a few people. Um, Go for it. Some of our Twitter followers that tweet us and retweet us and promote us on a daily basis. So, without further ado, Phoenix is hot, Marie. Yeah! Casey Love. <laughs> Danielle. And I, there's more that I, that I know that I'm not remembering, but those are three that are on the top of my head. So, thanks to all our Twitter people who uh, promote us on a daily basis. Uh, your support means a lot to all of us. And a lot of times, this is Nick speaking, by the way, a lot of times I'm the one that's doing all the tweets and stuff like that, but I do share a lot of this stuff, almost all this stuff with Cliff, Paul, and Brian. So, Phoenix is hot, Casey Love, Danielle, we love you! Yeah! Is there some stuff you don't share with them? <laughs> yes. So. This one, there are some things I for myself. There are some things that I do keep to myself. Yeah, so, but it's all good. But we Don't have a worry, lot of fans. We'll, we'll, we'll let it slip after a few drinks. We actually th we had a milestone this month on all our our uh, platforms. We have over twenty thousand fans now nice. on all our social network sites, including Facebook, Reverb Nation, uh, Twitter, and all that. MySpace. So, in a MySpace. Year. In a year. In a year, we've we've uh, up to tw over twenty thousand fans, and we're really proud. We're you know we're number two on the metal chart metal charts here in Chicago and I think we're like number number 102 or number one or 103 nationally on Reverb Nation's metal charts so we're, we're nice. proud of that and it's you know it's in a all year the, or two that's yeah and it's all our fans that you know they're playing our tunes and watching our videos and you know sharing our pages and things like that and you know it means a lot to us and we, we found our fans really are friends because whenever we run into somebody you know they're that actually knows us and this and that man they're just, just like always Everything just clicks with people. It comes together. I know that sounds cliche, but, you know, it really does turn out. And that's one of the fun things about playing out is the, the different people we meet, you know. There's some really, really cool people out there in the scene that are the venue. And, but we need to get, you know, we get there at like 6 to start setting up all our stuff and banners and PA systems. And, like. and it's really cool for some of our fans to show up at 6 o'clock and start hanging with us and partying with us and getting to know us. Um, as you know, personally and as as a band, so we really like that. You know, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, it means a lot to us. You know, it's kind of a you know a lifestyle that we lead, and uh, you know we want to share that with all our our fans. And we have an awesome street team here locally in the Chicago market, um, so we appreciate that too. They do a lot of work for us, hanging flyers and calling the local radio stations and whatnot. Um, so, got to give a shout out to the Skull Team. Skull King Street Team. Street Team. Street Team. Um, and we have to thank them. Yeah. It's all good. But that really is one of the coolest things. It's just like all the people we meet, man. There's some really kick-ass people out there. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been fortunate to share the stage with a lot of bands, you know, here in Chicago. Um, Dead Man's Hand is a, is a band that we play with. We got some shows coming up with our brothers in Under Protest. I think we're doing yeah. three or four shows with them coming up. Um, in our hometown, so we're excited about that. It's cool. Any other shout outs? Shout outs? Mom, oh, shout dad. outs. Mom, dad. I got a shout Mom, out to dad. Dave for playing three songs in a row. Yeah, Dave! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun to shout out to individuals, but it really is a group effort for everybody that, you know, the, the over thousand people that, you know, follow us on, on Twitter and Facebook and things like that. 
Um, you know, it's the, the power in numbers that does it for us. But there's some individuals that stand out. You know, I mentioned a few, but there's a lot of them behind the scenes. I mean, f from our road crew to people who work our merchandising stands, things like that, you know, we got to give shouts out to them as well. So that's, that's a lot of the hard work, you know, lifting up those speakers and, and things like that and moving things around. You know, a lot of people, when they come to a show, they just see us, you know, the 45 minutes or the 60 minutes we're on stage rocking and out. But, you know, we're there four hours ahead of time with our road crew and setting things up. And, and those speakers are freaking heavy. Those speakers heavy, are freaking heavy. Oh, my God. And I'm, the, I'm like the one with the, the muscles in the band, so <laughs> they make me carry these things on my back. He's the, personal, really he's very, the personal trainer slash They mule. really <laughs> use that. I mean, I they I can carry a lot of stuff. And Next time we're, we're we're loading, just we're gonna throw that back at him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, just, I carry some stuff. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying this one's a little <laughs> heavy. That's for what's me, all. That's anyway. what's nice about being the, the singer in the band. You're just like, uh, yeah. Have fun, bring your amps, and I'm just gonna walk in. Together I, I, he I doesn't do a, anything during the show, but walk around with a freaking microphone. What is that way? I have a <laughs> shout out from Rob from Dark Entropy, and he says, st uh, "Tell Luco to stop being so gay." <laughs> Uh, all right, Rob, I'll try and stop being so gay then. Awesome. Yeah, but wait. I'm, I'm, not do have, I, I'm not done with him yet. I do have to hand it out, hand it to Nick, though. After we're finished, he doesn't, like, I've been in bands before where the singer's just gone. And it's like, dude, we got to, you know, load stuff up. And he's long gone. But Nick doesn't do that. He's there. He does help out with all that stuff. You know he doesn't have, like, amps to load and drums. He's there helping out with that. You know what's sad is in my old band, the drummer left his drum set at my house, and my brother and I packed it into the van and brought it to the venue and unloaded it and everything. Like, Whoa. I load gear. <laughs> I shuffle the, the gear everywhere. The drummer didn't do shit? No. What a bitch. Well, I just see an opening in our band for a fifth person. To, just to carry the stuff? Yeah, yeah just her. No, I can't Morgan, carry everything. Morgan, you're hired, Morgan. <laughs> you are in charge of our as road long, now. As we long as every week I get a massage... At an expensive massage parlor to fix my broken back at the end of the week. Awesome. I will do it. Done. Done. If you can guarantee I get a professional Done. massage every week, I'll do it. Dave, too. Oh, it has to be professional? <laughs> it has to be professional. I thought I was going to a little bit. I was going to put Brian on the job. <laughs> yeah, put me on the job. He's got experience with that since he's been tased. Uh, he knows about it. <laughs> yeah. so, I'll, I'll, I'll work for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for all you guys out there listening... Yeah, she is fine, so I'm sure I'd get tased before I, yeah, yeah. And then my wife would kick the crap out of me. And she don't even like me, so, you know. I, just I, on principle alone. I have to ask the band, just being, I hit the window. Um, just trying to escape. <laughs> Help, I'm caged like an animal. Okay, so being the end of the year, and this is our last show for the year, your guys' history as a band of this year, what has been the highlighting moment and what is your New Year's resolution for next year as a band where you guys want to go? Hmm. Good question. That's a very good question. Mine's easy. Good, because that All was right, the best question I've come start up with. Let's start with, let's start with our, dr our drummer, Brian. Okay. What do you got to say Mine's there, brother? Mine's easy. Okay. And, and no disrespect, Don't get tased. No disrespect to the bands I've been in before. Now I'm just going to get a crap kicked out of me now, which doesn't feel nearly as good as a good tasing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think just he's a little finding insane. The, find, <laughs> finding this band, which was so in sync like with what I've been wanting to do for years, which is original music and metal, but not just, you know, I mean, I love playing thrash. I love playing, you know, all kinds of different music and everything. But, you know, this is right along with what I've been trying to do. I mean, I get room to explore. I get room to, to be musical sometimes and sometimes just to abuse the hell out of my kit, you know. And it varies. Some, it, it, it's it, to me. It's been my blessing for the year. So now, now you know my main concern is that I don't screw it up and get fired for 2012. For 2012. <laughs> That's your resolution. <laughs> That's don't get fired. fired. For 2012. <laughs> So, but no, you know, it's just, that's my thing. And like I said, I've only been in the band for six months. So um, direction wise, I think maybe they can say a little bit more. But for me personally, you know, I'm totally in love with these guys in a totally non-gay way, even though I'm not homophobic. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, yeah, he, he Cliffy grabs my butt a lot. <laughs> Next. Wow. Uh, this, is, this is Paul. I don't have any resolutions, really, but I think the highlight has been writing because uh, if you look at how the songs have evolved, I know, like, writing earlier, um, I, I didn't want to go too far out there, and as we 
come up with different ideas, these guys are welcoming as I kind of push it a little bit more and a little bit more um, to try to get what I want us to sound like. And, and they're welcoming of that and, and just collaborating with the ideas. I think it's, uh, that's, that's the highlight for me. That was a mistake. Apparently, Brian finds it funny to play with toilet paper and wrapping his members of the band up in it. Like I found mummies. a new highlight. <laughs> his highlight of the year. Yeah. So what do you got for us, Cliff? Like All right. Um, I guess my New Year's resolution is to, uh, is to make the most rockinest tune ever. And um, you heard it first. The most rockinest. The tune most rockinest ever. tune ever. Which is coming as soon as he learns how to play the rest of those damn strings on that bass. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> or if we can't write the most rockinest tune, we'll write a tribute to the most rockinest tune. Yeah. <laughs> this is Tenacious D, you know. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Getting wrapped in tape. Dude, this is why we need a webcam. That's this so is. I agree. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a compliment. And a highlight of 2011. Highlight of 2000, 2011. Um, I guess would be working with these guys. These guys are great to work with. I mean, from from the time they arrive to the time they leave. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so you can, I'm not putting <laughs> that. Oh my god, that's what she said. I'm I'm trying to be serious I, here. <laughs> We're having a bonding moment, and you are. I'll give you the dry end. Just so ever, the, everyone can. Know what's going on? <laughs> I'm gonna tase you, Brian, in a second. Huh? I'm He'll like it too much. Don't do you. that. I'm gonna tase you, Brian. Just excite you, bro. Behave yourself. You just excite me. You've been mummified. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Cliff, what, what what's the highlight? The um the high, with would be working with these guys. I mean, from the time they arrive at my house to the time they leave, it's always it's always fun. It's always it's always very um. Very inspiring to work with all of these guys, and uh, um, to, yeah, ah, uh, yes, rub them all, yeah, <laughs> and it's it's great. I mean, just 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 having 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 a creative outlet is just the one number one thing. Um, and I love playing music. I love being involved with music, and the fact that um, that I'm able to make some make some outstanding music with some friends, it's great. All right, Nick, go ahead. Well, you know. As far as something that stands out in 2011, it, there's so many great things that have happened with the band and, and, and whatnot, but just the fact that you know, I can get up every day and hang out with my best buds and you know, write rock and metal, is I can't ask for more than that. So that's not my highlight of the year. And as far as you know, what's going to happen in 2012, you know, we just want to keep writing our best music and just keep doing what we're doing, having fun, uh, creating, meeting people. Um, and uh, just doing our thing. Those are those here, are here. good here, here. highlights. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we would like to see everybody out at our shows. You know, we got a lot of them coming up, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, need to go to our Facebook page and, and Twitter and things like that and, and, and follow. You know, we have events tabs and things like that, so we always welcome people to come and support us and support the scene. We try to support... All the all the bands in the scene as much as we possibly can. Even days when we're not together practicing or we're not you know doing shows. You know we we like to go see other bands and and promote the scene and and just hang out. It's fun. You know people. Um, you know a lot of people. You know we're considered a metal band, no doubt. I mean I guess that's the genre that you know we are kind of lumped in. But we've had people from all walks of life and people who like country music that come to a Skull King concert and they're like, wow, you know, that really sounded cool and they like it. So, you know, we, we really, you know, as a goal for 2012, you know, we just want to reach um, a larger audience to show them that just because we're a metal band or a hard rock band, that doesn't mean anything. B but it's good music. We just want you to like the music. And I think um, if people were a little bit more open-minded about metal and rock and, you know, come out and have a good time. And, I, you know, on a Friday or Saturday night, if you can go pay five or eight bucks to go see four or five bands, why would you sit home and do nothing? You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a blast at shows. I mean, I enjoy myself every time we play. Um, and I would li I'd like to see this, the scene come together here in Chicago. And that's my two cents, if it's worth anything. And again, we've been fortunate enough to play with some really good bands, which uh, another reason to stay, you know? Exactly. Another reason to stay, another reason to play. Hey. All right. So, you know, coming up, we got 
Thursday night, stage bar just around the corner. Show starts at 9 o'clock. 8 o'clock, doors open. Come on in. Um, we're going to hit the stage and tear it up. We're going to debut our newest song, Countdown. <laughs> so it's going to be the first time we've ever played it. Um, and we have a lot of new songs that we're going to be debuting. The following week, we're back in our hometown, January 7th, Zelmo's, with our buddies in Under Protest. That show starts at 9. We go on at about 11. We're going to tear that place up. Uh, the following week, Guest House in Elgin, first time there. We're going to rip that place apart. And then the, the big show, January 28th, The Monsters of Metal at uh, Club 38 in West Chicago. Um, following that, you know, February 3rd, we're at Q Sports. We've played there a couple times. Um, that's an awesome place to, to, to see Skull King. So Where's we're looking Q Sports forward. at? It's Q Sports. Darien. It's in Darien. Um, <laughs> and it's an awesome <laughs> place. It's a, it's a huge I've venue. It. Yeah, it's a, it's a great place. Um, we've played there a couple times already, and we're looking forward to Joey DeMarco, our, our booking agent, set that up for us, so we, we appreciate that very much. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> well, with that said, Dave, I think uh, you know what time it is. Or do you? He has to be reminded to do something. It's time to fool. play nine more Skull King songs! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we got Whistleblower coming up. Yes, we do. All right, I'll throw that on for you guys. Keep your mic on. <laughs> Whistleblower. Something's never changed. The mic's still on. Secrets held within. An image still remains. Of knowing what you did. It's been too long. It's been too long. It's been too long.
You're listening to the Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. That's right, we're back. That was Whistleblower. We're in the studio with Skull King. Skull King! Skull King! And Dave, I got... What I was trying to tell you is the special you know what part and then you you're just like oh last song and i'm like and then you play it i'm like you're an idiot so do it right this now time. it's time for hey man look what i found only on the middle experience dave you won what you won i found this band from miami florida sons of atrophy and they are fucking pretty sweet i got two real quick songs they're pretty short songs we're gonna Fucking preview them right now. They're pretty sweet. In Crisis and Dismembered. Yeah. Woo! 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 Yeah. 
Back. That was Sons of Atrophy from Miami, Florida, with In Crisis and Dismembered. Check them out. They're the shit. Dude, that's anyway, a kick ass ending scene. on that song, too, oh man. Yeah, with like Skull that. King. Yeah, my head, my face kind of melted a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, that bass boom right there. I'm like, Ugh! But anyway, moving on. We're moving on. Studio. With Skull King, and there was one more shout out you had. To yeah, do? you know I got another shout out. You know we got a lot of friends out there and everything doing the Twitter stuff, but there's there's a couple of people that have really really helped us a lot. And they've done it out of the goodness of their hearts. Uh, Vince Duarte, of course, uh, you know, helping us with merchandising and design and doing all kinds of stuff, man. Just endless, endless. And Janine uh, Caputo, who's just like, she's our one of the biggest parts of our street team. I mean, she's out there and she's just nonstop, you know, pushing the band, talking about the band, helping us with flight, helping us with everything. And uh, the two of them are like, you know, the fifth and sixth members of the band. And you know. she puts on a hell of an after party. Yes, she puts on a hell of an after party, man. Love those. No uh, doubt. Yeah, I mean, big time. Yeah. Yeah. I woke up with a, a new tattoo after our last <laughs> after party oh. and a mohawk. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like that because you're giving me ideas for the next after party now, man. Thursday night. Thursday night, next after party, come see how Nick wakes up in the morning because it ain't gonna Not be the same way he goes to bed. Not my house at all. Yeah, your house, brother. Your house. So I, uh. Holly, clean the living room. I wrote down some things here for. Not not everything that happened this year, but just, just a few highlights of 2011. I mean, you guys can chime in if you had favorites or any of these, but, uh. Are some, these your highlights or are these city highlights? No, or these what are. Kind of highlights I'll, are these? I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> tell us about it out, Morgan. <laughs> um, so a few albums that came out this year. Was Unearth, Corn, uh, White Chapel, Suicide Silence, Children Bodom, Asking Alexandria, Five Finger Death Punch, All Shall Perish, and Kitty. Those are all pretty decent albums that came out this year. They had for, new albums. Don't forget Heathen. Oh, Heathen. okay. Heathen. Heathen. Okay. I don't know if they came out this year or the year before. But Anybody else? Good album come I'm, out this year you picked up. I don't know if it came out this year, but uh, I think it was uh, 2010. But m- one of my favorite bands, Mushroom Head. Um, and then Jeffrey Nothing just has a new album coming out, the new Solo Psychedelia. Album? Yeah, new, Cliff's uh, favorite new. is the Mushroom Tip. <laughs> <laughs> um, no! <laughs> um, I, I can't top that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, one, sorry. Uh, one of my one of my favorite albums of the year, Times of Grace. Um, an awesome I album. love Times, Times of Grace. I saw them live. Did you? They were amazing. Awesome. So I, that was Adam that's D. One, yeah, that's one of my highlights. And then Kill Switch Good. Engages are probably one of my favorite bands. Coming Breaking back Benjamin. next year. Yes. Breaking um, Benjamin came out with a new album too. <laughs> I like that band. Okay. <laughs> next. Um, he's a bass player. They think um, differently. Some bands that reformed this year was System of a Down, Ministry, yeah. Black Sabbath, Coal Chamber, and At the Gates. Coal Chamber. Coal Chamber got back together? Yeah, they did. Well, that's, no, that's not cool. Well, they should have stayed broken up. I like Really? It. I fucking hate like Coal Chamber. Wow. But he has a CD. I, 
Uh, it was given to me for free, and no one will take it from me. But they're so evil. I will. I will give that CD out to anyone. Give it to me. It. Hello. Have, yeah. Nope. I'm giving Damn. it to Dave. Suck. Give it to right. Dave. <laughs> I'll fight Morgan for Some it. bands that uh, broke up or went on hiatus. Uh, Atreyu and Disturbed went on hiatus, indefinite hiatus. Um, and then right. Haste the Day, God Dethroned, and Skinless broke up. And then uh, there was a few deaths this year in the metal community that happened. Uh, Ryan Dunn in that That's not really metal crash. community. Well, he Fool. was a big metal head, so there you go. Uh, Mike Starr, the original bassist of Alice in Chains. Seth Putnam of Anal Cunt. He was the vocalist. Anal Cunt. Uh, Corey Smoot of Guar. Uh, Janie Lane of Warrant. And then the former motorist guitarist, Michael Burston. Passed motorist away. guitarist? Motor, motorhead. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I said motorist. Oh shit, that motorhead. was motorhead. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a big motorhead. miss. You fool. Know. Yeah, pop. and then uh, a curse, uh, Curtis Canino, uh, that local metalhead that got shot at one of the local shows. It wasn't. It wasn't too. a Skull King show. Yeah, I don't know yeah. why I thought it was Skull King. I can't remember whose show it was at. Outside Cobra Lounge. That should never happen. Exactly. Never. Never. So uh, one more time for you guys. Where can people find you on Facebook? A few shows coming up. Facebook, Reverb Nation, Twitter, at Skull King 4. We're on MySpace, SoundCloud. But I guess our, our, our main headquarters would be on Facebook. So, you know, like our Facebook page, we always... Uh, Post most of our stuff there, and you can find us at my house too. Yeah, you can and you're house. always welcome. Can I give out your address, Cliff? Uh, uh, yeah. No. The last time, <laughs> give it out the last address. time we did that, number, the last time we number. gave out an address, it, well, it, was it wasn't pretty. <laughs> um, but no, um, you know, the best thing to do is like our Facebook page. There's an event tab. You know, we're always putting information on there. But come out to any, any and all our shows. You know, we love to see all our fans and just to hang out. You know, have a good time. You know, my personal philosophy is, you know, you only live once. I mean, it, it's kind of cliche, but it truly is. Uh, so you might as well enjoy every minute. And every day I can wake up and um, do the things that I love is a good day. Nice. That's close to mine. I'll never die. You'll never die. I'll never die. See, I got the yank to your yin. Unless they tase you too many times. Oh, no, <laughs> And no, you go no, into cardiac just, arrest. He was tased today. Didn't, <laughs> didn't, oh, didn't man, the Mick, just gives me power. Didn't the McRib come back this year, too? Yeah. The McRib came yeah. back. You that, didn't that's, have that's, that on there? That's Yeah, Morgan. I've never had a McRib. <laughs> that's what? that's You've big. Never lived. Not You've only never is the McRib lived. back, but Tool's making a new album in 2012. Fueled. I heard fueled by the McRib. No. Uh, Completely fueled by the McRib. No, Tool, which is what the McRibs are made out of, Tool's. But that's, I know that's bad, but to some people. I think, I, I think a highlight of 2011 for it was really having Brian join the band. Tr yeah. Truly, truly. I can see why. Yeah, yeah, truly. I mean, he really has, you know, I can't say enough about it. I mean, he fits in perfectly. You can uh, set him on fire whenever you want. We can set want. him on fire. Yeah. We can tase him. We can, be, we can beat him. He's up for experiment. Do anything you, you want. You know what's really awesome about Brian? When we practice, there's a there's a little refrigerator behind him oh, yeah. where we store our beer. I make a good and bartender. And he asks, like tonight when I walk into practice, Nick, would you like a beer? And I had a nice cold beer handed to me that is nice. right away. So his job is secure. Yeah. <laughs> his job no is charge. secure. And if you get no kicked charge. out, you'll be their personal bartender. Yeah, his job is secure. Yeah. With us. Even so. though it's my duty and my charge to <laughs> irritate Cliff every time he's got one of those little bass pieces all by himself, man. I'm doing oh. ro I'm doing rototom <laughs> solos all the time, every time. We get pretty crazy at practice, but it's fun, you know? And if you haven't been to a Skull King concert, you're really missing out because it, it is fun from the minute we walk into the door until we get thrown out at the end of the night. It's a good time. If you've never been thrown out of a bar, come hang with us. <laughs> come hang with us. It's we will manage it's to magic. figure out a way. Yeah. We'll get you thrown out and invited back. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you got skills. And possibly tased. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a party. Speaking of which, Luke, I'm glad you didn't volunteer me for tasing and setting on fire. Who said he still wasn't going to do that? <laughs> hey, our intern would love to be tased and set on fire for you guys. Dude, awesome. Come on. Why did I open yeah. my big mouth? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and we definitely got to thank the metal experience, Morgan and Luca, for, oh. for having us out tonight. Hell yeah. It was fun. Anytime you guys want to come back. Hey, we'll be back next invited. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can share the room with Always Misbehave. Awesome. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Sure. An oh, all female metal group. It should be very And they are a cover band. Cover band. All. <laughs> 
female metal cover band. Can I tell you about one of my worst metal experiences now that you mentioned that? <laughs> Go on. I went to a show. Go right ahead, Brian. I went to a show, dude. It was uh, Bruce What's-His-Face that used to be a... Willis? No. It used Bruce to be a Willis face. show. Although I love Bruce Willis. I do, man. Talk about a white ball guy that rocks. So, anyway. Bruce Dickinson? No. I went to see... Bruce no, Springsteen? Uh, Bruce, Bruce... Uh, Springsteen? I can't think of it, man. Having Springsteen? A no, he was in Kiss uh, for a little bit, for like a uh, year or something. Bruce Kulik? Kulik? Yeah, Kulik, Kulik, Kulik. 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 He, he passed, didn't he? No, huh? it was, uh, it was uh, the drummer that passed away. Are you sure? Yeah. But anyway, one of the bands that opened up for him was Gutter Sluts, man, and I was all over that. Gutter, Not the original Gutter Sluts. I couldn't wait. And by Gutter the way, there's Sluts. another band called Gutter Sluts out there now that did it right. But I went out to see this band. Gutter Sluts comes out on stage, and dude is these four greasy dudes with guitars playing some bad, like kind of death metal kind of thing, but it wasn't real good. And I was so disappointed, man, that gutter sluts not only weren't sluts, but they were dudes. <laughs> and so I guess one of my great things about 2011, which actually I just found out the other day, is that there's a band out called the Gutter Sluts now, dude, that are actually sluts. So, hey yeah. So, dude, I mean, well, I don't know if they're sluts, but they're girls, so... <laughs> From the gutter. Why do you look at me when you're t- when you're saying? Because that? you do a lot of the booking. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's I looking was, at you, going, "I want these I gutter sluts." I was just sluts. thinking, dude. Oh, yeah, know. you know, get a show with the gutter sluts. Do a show with the gutter sluts, man. It'll be on my to do list. Okay, no You're doubt. Good. All right, no doubt. All right, all right, Dave. Q. Q. It's time for the local roundup. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> So I just got a text in the middle of the show from Rob from Dark Entropy, and he told me to give a shout out for the people to check out shows at another hole in the wall because they're in danger of closing, and they need. I thought the place was supposed to be awesome. I thought so too, but apparently they need more people to start booking shows there, and a lot more people to start going out there, or they're going to be another local venue that is going to close down. Which place is that? Another hole in the wall. Yeah, they're I've only in, heard uh, good things about them. I don't. That's uh, that's surprising. I can't Every band that's come in here that's right played now. there says the place is yeah. awesome. Where is it? Uh, we, what town is it? It's a little bit remember? past Tinley Park, and I can't remember where it's at right now. I know it's out there. Dave, Dave's looking it up. Keep Dave's going. Up. Okay. Dave's got it. We, so while we, he's looking that up. Yeah, we haven't played there at Skull King, but I, I played there in my previous band, and I, I recently saw Mushroom had actually played there, and they yeah. did a benefit for, um, what's those guys that got uh, convicted? Something five. West Memphis 3? The West Memphis they 3. They got oh released. My God. Right, Morgan has right. a giant boner for this I love, West Memphis no, 3. I, I, you don't know who they are? Oh, my God. I'm like, shut the fuck up. I don't <laughs> it's care. It's famous. Yeah, How have I you not don't heard of this? Mean, dude. Uh, I, I had to explain it to him life. last night. Sure. It well, was ridiculous. My life. Well, anyways, Mushroom Head did a benefit show for the West Memphis <laughs> Three at another hole in the wall. It's in Steger. Steger. Steger, Steger, Steger. Illinois. Steger. Yeah, exactly. Steger. All right. Can, can we read what Gutter Absolutely. Slut Urban Dictionary? Yeah, there we go. Uh, a cheap street whore that will kneel down in an alley gutter and blow you for 50 cents. <laughs> wow, Brian, that's, that's perfect what, for you. That's what a gutter slut awesome. is. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> like how they will Get blow it. you for so 50 cents. So there you cents. go, folks. Bring out, Come out to a gutter slut show and bring a dollar. Let them make change. All, all right. The, all the answers can be found on Google. I'm, Sweet. I'm determined. Bring a dollar and get blown twice. <laughs> all right. So moving on. A buddy. Okay. Uh, for those people, I got a dollar. I got two of us, so uh, let's get this done. Are you done? <laughs> nope. Okay. Yep. For those uh, people that keep asking me, hey, how are you so good at promoting, and what can I do to promote? I well, asked you that just a while ago. Yeah, I said, Damn, I, you're good. And I said, just wait, just wait. All I will right. tell you my secrets. Me. You no. You will go on to our page and you will see whatever we like, and then you will. Right Mexican it, word of the day. Open link in new tab. The Mori Show. Are you done? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and then you will copy and paste whatever you have to say on those walls, such as like Metal Local and Metal Mafia and Chicago Underground Promotions and Double Smoking. A Entertainment and Disarming the Tyrant yet. Music and Jerry Ethereal Springer. Entertainment. <sighs> you go to these pages and you just copy and paste over and over again. And if you're like me, you're on probation with them because you're going to be kicked off because I post too much on too many walls. And your socks don't match. Uh, that, does, that has nothing to we do with it. We should post Thanks. more on the Maury show. Okay, we'll moving going. on. Uh, Anatomy from Southern Illinois are you looking are for someone to play keyboard and provide backup vocals. Hit them up at anatomy at hotmail.com. That's A E N O M Y. And yeah. So Spawn and Shadows from Orland Park are looking for a frontman. Contact them if you're interested. Remora 
is looking for a bassist and a guitarist a to get in on their action. So contact them on Facebook because they need people in March because they're going to be recording and they want to play more shows. I like marches. Yeah, marches are good. Those are good. Those are good. Speaking of speaking of front men, Cliff's looking for a rear man. But anyway. <laughs> oh man. Well, we're not that type of service. So <laughs> Craigslist maybe. <laughs> Uh, through Ashes and Casket Robbery are looking to play shows, so if you want another band on your bill, you should probably hit them up. Uh, Chim and Rain are playing the 21st. That's totally mispronounced. But probably. Going. I'm sorry. Did I, you say Chicken Rain? <laughs> chicken Rain? Chimmer Rain? Chicken Rain. I don't know. And, and, that you men- and that you mentioned that, Morgan, if, if a band wants to play with us, you know, just contact us on Facebook. We get, we get a lot of bands to work with us by, you know, just hooking and up with us. There you go. Us. You can play with Skull King. Yeah. Uh, January 21st at Mojo's, Chimmer Rain are playing, Jeez. and they are looking for people to play at their album release show. We should find out how to pronounce their name. Probably. One day I whoa, will. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. What? See, that's how young she is, man. That's Sumerian, like Sumerian? Conan, like Conan the Barbarian. Remember, he was a Sumerian. No. That is Sumerian. Sumerian. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. okay. The C-H? Sumerian. I'm sorry. No, Dude, it's that's C I. Cl- that's classic. Sumerian. C I M M E R I A N. All right. Black Venom Promotions she are making. She college, folks. Yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. Black Venom Promotions are looking to make another free compilation CD. So send them their compilation. Tracks. Shut up. Now see, she's I'm younger. I'm not good at English. Everything. She's younger, and that brings up another topic too oh, about God. the lack of education <laughs> for kids in this country today. I feel you know our educational <laughs> system's Brian. falling they, apart. You know it, what? I think what basically where you're going off is they don't show enough of. Uh, Conan the Barbarian in school. Can I mean, we get this done? I'm on a time limit, Luco. Nope. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> Black Venom Promotions looking to put together CDs to pass out, so hit them up with your MP3 and send to blackvenompromo at yahoo.com to get your name out there. Yeah, and you know Arnold Schwarzenegger made a terrible Conan the Barbarian because he had a mullet. You remember the mullet he had? <laughs> I do not recall Dude, the mullet. Dude, barbarians I was, I was do not wear mullets. Text. The metal experience needs your music to pass out at shows. That's us. So if you have demos, stickers, flyers, whatever else you need... You can send us an email at the metal experience at yahoo.com or hit us up on Facebook because we've got a lot of shows next year that we are sponsoring that we need to pass out your stuff at. So get a hold of us. And that we need to pass out at. Yes. Yes. Thursday, December 29th at Penny Road Pub. It's the last show of the year. It starts at 6.30. It's $10 in all ages. Monument 45, Impulses, Running in Circles, Taken to Heart, Beneath the Gallows, and Shotgun Zombie are playing. Friday, December 30th at Live 59. It's an all-ages show. $10, 4 p.m. Bands are supposed to load in by 3. Load. Uh, well, at 3. Oh yeah. So, That's Coin, Jaded, Hometown Heroes, The Missing Kids, Sound of the Stereo, The Victory Lap, Thanks for the Falcon, Valera, Fickless Lot, and V1C3 is playing, and it's going to be V1C3's <laughs> CD release show. Oh. I don't know. Wow. Uh, the show that Dude, Luco that sounded like Thanks and for the Falcon. That's uh, a pretty interesting name. Yeah. The show yeah, that Luco and I are going to be at on Friday is going to be at JD Mugs, 8 p.m. <laughs> it's all ages. It's $6, but it's going to be Remora, Rain Inferno, Roman Ring, Audacity, and Clock Tower. And they regret to inform you that Larry King will not be in attendance. Darn it. Oh, I don't couldn't get find it. the right bow tie. If you're looking for a New Year's Eve show, Sad. there are three options for you. Three, that's it? Saturday, December 31st. It's obviously New Year's. Uh, 4.30 p.m. at Live 59. It's all ages. Uh, 21 plus can drink in the new bar. And it's $10. It's an all-genre show. Uh, Peasant Revolution, Blue Moon, Crunchy Grenade Rangers. <laughs> Neo, I remember the Blue Moon almost got me thrown out of Penny Road. Neo, <laughs> H.O. Oh, wait, that was a stark Beyond white This moon. Kingdom, Charlie Campbell, Fist of Stanley, M80. <laughs> Fist, <laughs> Fist, did you say Fist of Stanley? Fist of Stanley or, Stanley or, Fist Stanley. Stanley. or did you say <laughs> Fisting <laughs> Stanley? I heard Fisted Stanley as Fist in past tense, as in he's recovering and All he's right. next in line for a good Apparently. tribute. The Wolf, Anthony Chai, Illa Montgomery, Brandon Hack. We need to help make money to Danny Diesel, the Loud Loud, and Adara. Is this all at 559? Yes. Wow. Wow. Um, also on New Year's at the Phoenix Bar at 9 p.m. And it's $5. The Smoking Gorilla, 
li- <laughs> lives on trial and seven year existence. And it's going to be seven years existence. Uh, going to be putting out a new song. Oh, and uh, I don't know. But seven years. It's going to be <laughs> a new song plus a golden oldie you haven't heard in a while with a new twist. Sweet. And last but not least, at the Brower House at 9 p.m., 21 and up, $5. It's Vikings of the Apocalypse. And then a stand up comedy act of Beanbag Jenkins and Nick Lazis. Beanbag Jenkins. Yes, we so, love to laugh. <laughs> and that's, smile. that's it. What are you guys doing for New Year's? Actually, we're, we're going to be we're going to be doing Jenkins. another radio interview. We actually already don't remember what we're doing for New Year's, so that's called uh, New Year's. We're going to be ahead. doing a radio interview. A radio interview, eight thirty Central Standard Time. On what? what? We are? <laughs> Apparently, Brian, you were not informed of this. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> I'm the drummer. Facebook. I'm basically there to keep a beat and pass out the beer because I'm close to the refrigerator. This was one of the Twitter posts that he didn't share with you. What is? It? Uh, um, they're whispering. We're, 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 Cliff's looking it up right now. He's going to give you the oh, okay. exact really? details of would you, what you're going to you be airing. Exa- exact would you text detail. it to me, please, dear? <laughs> no, but we always got something cooking. Um, you know, the best thing to do is like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter. We're always posting what we're doing. But we're going to be doing another interview on New Year's Eve. Um, so we're going to tell you about that here in a second. <laughs> That's the right cue, <laughs> awesome. Dave. Good job. Good job, dude. Thanks, Dave. It's gotten quiet here in the Metal Experience studio. I like the crooked sound. It's nice. It's relaxing. <laughs> Welcome to the sounds of the night. I'm your so host, Bag Jenkins. <laughs> getting your lazy boy, kick out that foot thing that holds your toes up in the air close to the fireplace <laughs> and sing along with the Skull King, because we're going to take you to Magic Town. Yeah, we're going to be on um, evilbroadcasting.com um, with the Diamond Sam uh, doing an interview. So it's going to be pretty cool. So evil broadcasting, evilbroadcasting.com, check us out, New Year's Eve, and uh, you'll be hearing some champagne being p- corks popped in the background, I'm sure. Right, You're Brian? You're going to be there through midnight. Midnight. I don't think we're going to be. I think we, our interview is like at 8:30 Central Time, but they're going to have a, a lot of different bands interviewed, so we're just one of them to, nice. to be fortunate enough to be on there. So that's really cool. Well, thank you guys for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been awesome having you guys wrap up the year with us. Thanks and for uh, us. thanks for having us. This has been a wrap on the last show of 2011 for the oh. Metal Experience. All right. But there'll be more in 2012. Oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah. We're booked, people, through February. Uh, awesome. We've only so, just begun to rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but still, send me your free CDs. Yeah, send us your demos. Sorry, I love, no, just send me them. No, don't do that. I'll take them. <laughs> and then he'll complain about them, and then he'll try to give them away. I, okay. I'll do all of that. Which reminds me, uh, we're going to fight over that CD. Uh, Cold Chamber? You want it? <laughs> Was it Cold Chamber? Is that what you said? Yeah, Cold Chamber. Cold Chamber. Yeah. A, I don't know how many C's they have. It's the one with the that has the first one. I know they have <laughs> more than one. They have several. I think they have three or four. Yeah, that sounds no, about right. But yeah. anyway, this is the Metal Experience. And we're, we're going out on one more song with you guys? Sure. Why not? What do we got? Is Dave, what do we got? What song is, is it? Always dead. You guys wanted to do a, the song called Break? Break. Break. I don't Break. see why not. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Good night, guys. Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2012. Uh, It smells like button.